Hey, I'm Ben Wilmore. Sounds like you want to know about those colors that show up in the histogram, huh? Well, uh, they can tell you a lot about your image, but you got to know a little bit before they're really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open some images and I'm not going to be looking at the pictures themselves. I'm going to look just at the histogram. In fact, I have my screen zoomed up so the histogram fills my screen and I can see nothing else. But in post, I'm going to overlay the picture that the histogram represents and I'm going to be describing what, how I interpret that histogram and what all the colors mean. Then if you think that's useful information, then you can hang out a little longer and I'll zoom out and I'll show you how you can really think about how that histogram works behind the scenes. So you know why do the, number, why do the uh, colors show up and you can know how to think about them and use them on your images. So let's dive in and get started. So here's my first histogram. Remember, I cannot see whatever image this is. All I'm seeing is this histogram filling my screen. Now I can tell you this image does not have any solid white in the image, but there is something near white. That area that's near white is pretty neutral in color. If anything, there's a hint of bluishness to it, but it wouldn't be all that prominent. The dark portion of the image is another story. Whatever it is in the dark area is very colorful. It's got greens and yellows in it, and it takes up a relatively wide brightness range from relatively dark to medium dark. The stuff in the middle, kind of above maybe, I don't know, mid-tone, is not all that colorful heading up into those highlights. Let's move on to the second image. Uh, let's see, in this image, this, the brightest part of this image, well, the whole image is extremely colorful. Mainly, though, the bright area is the most colorful, and it's extremely reddish-orange. Uh, and it doesn't go all the way up to white. It's not that bright, but the brightest area is extremely colorful. The darkest area is a little different. In fact, it's almost a little confusing. Uh, it looks like we have some hint of blue in there, but I don't think it's actually all that prominent. Uh, but the dark part is harder to interpret. Uh, so let's move on to the next image. All right, this image, again, we have extremely vivid bright areas. The bright areas are on the reddish uh, orange side. And the highlights on this one, there is an area of solid white in the brightest part of the image. It's not all that big, but there's also another area that is almost white. It's actually yellow, vividly yellow, and it only has partial detail. It doesn't have full-on detail in that brightest area that is yellow. You can't see the texture that's in it, that kind of thing. In the dark portion of the image, let's see here. The very dark part is still pretty colorful uh, in there, and it's still on the red tones, uh, and it does go all the way down into the blacks. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to the next one. Now, this one, there's a lot of stuff in the brighter area, and that stuff is not all that colorful. If there's any hint of color to it, I would estimate it to be just the tiniest bit blue, but I mean tiny. Uh, there is something that is red that is uh, in the brighter area of the picture. It's very small though, but it feels like it's a little bit um, dominantly red, but I don't know, it's so small it's hard to interpret. Uh, and then in the dark portion of the image, well, not really dark, there's nothing extremely dark in this image. And if there's any dark areas that take up very little space, it's more the medium uh, brightness range in this image that either has been manipulated digitally or is simply extremely blue. Uh, and, but it looks manipulated in that somebody probably took a slider called Vibrance and cranked it up or went to the HSL sliders and brought the blues up. Uh, that's my guess. All right, now this, well, I thought the last image had a lot of blue in it. This image is so blue, it's like the whole thing is blue. Uh, there are blown out highlights, so we have some solid white areas. They're very small uh, in there. And uh, yeah, but otherwise this thing is blue throughout from just below the highlights. We got just the teeniest bit up in the very brightest area that only has the littlest hint of blue, but then suddenly the blue kicks in really hard and there's nothing really, really dark in this picture. Uh, all right, uh, let's see, this image. Uh, this is a weird histogram. Uh, let's see, this image, uh, there's nothing anywhere near black. There's something towards white, but not really all that close. And I can see one, 
two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, at least five distinct brightness levels in this image. And the brightest of those is yellowish. Uh, the darkest of those, it might not be that easy to tell because it'll be in the dark range, though is a little bit more bluish. Uh, and they do vary in color a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, this image could be enhanced most likely, uh, but it has nowhere near the full brightness range. All right, so uh, let's see. This image has uh, a large area that is bright, and that bright area uh, is a littlest bit, but not very noticeably, a uh, reddish orange, uh, and, but it's something that could easily be color corrected to be made white. Uh, there is nothing that is extremely bright in the image, though. Nothing that's truly white uh, within that image. Then as you get into the medium tones, uh, there is yellow, maybe the slightest hint of an orangish color in it, but um, that's what's there. And uh, when you get into the darkest areas, there's not all that much color. Uh, so let's go to the next image. This is a black and white picture. Uh, I can tell you that straight up. Uh, and in the black and white image, there is something, the, uh, a small area of dominant darkness. And otherwise, it's mainly mid-tones up towards the highlights. There's nothing that is uh, truly white. But the colors aren't telling me that because there are no colors. Uh, okay, this image. Um, this image looks like something that could be color corrected very easily uh, because it looks like it should be neutral. Uh, in that um, it's got an area of solid black in it. The highlights don't uh, generally have color in it, but once you get into the midtones, there's a hint of blue um, in those midtones. So this is a cool toned image, um, but just a very little slightest hint of it. Uh, let's see, this image. Um, this image I would guess to be a JPEG. Um, I would think it would be a JPEG. It has a lot of blue in the highlights in the bright area, but it's not really bright. There's nothing extremely bright in that image. Uh, and the dark area of the image has a little bit more of a warm tone, a little bit more of a yellow orange to it, but it's not dominant. Uh, but I'm thinking that this is a JPEG or, uh, oh, I see down at the bottom, it says smart preview, uh, or this is a very large image that has a smart preview. Uh, in the smart preview is something unique to uh, Lightroom. All right, let's just do one more. This also looks kind of like a tinted black and white picture. Uh, it's almost black and white. It has a teeniest bit of warmth to it uh, throughout most of it. And in the absolute darkest areas, there might be an almost imperceivable coolness or blueness to it. But if there's color throughout the rest, it's primarily yellows and oranges, and it's almost black and white. All right, so now you guys have seen what these images look like while I was looking at this. Uh, now I can zoom out and uh, whoop, take a look. Let's see. Okay, looks like we had more images in here too. Uh, I don't know, you guys can interpret it based on what I said. I don't think I need to look at it because I was looking at what I found to be useful. Uh, a couple things though, let's see. This one here, I'm assuming it's the one that I said had distinct tones to it. Uh, yeah, and how many are there? It's one, two, eh, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. And then one, two, three, four, yeah. I, I might not have counted them right, but I could see that. And I'm guessing that this image here was the one I said was blown out and had an area of yellow in it. Do you see where it's blown out? And then there's yellow that would have no detail. You wouldn't be able to see the texture in it. And I could tell that. So if you wanna know how you can start to use the colors in the histogram to your advantage, then you gotta know a teeny bit about how your images work behind the scenes. It doesn't have to be complicated, but there are some fundamental concepts that people aren't usually taught. So let's dive over into Photoshop for a second and I'll show you how color works. And then you'll see how that relates to the histogram. Here I have a full color image and I wanna show you how behind the scenes that image is created in Photoshop and in Lightroom. And that is this image behind the scenes is made out of red, green, and blue light. And here I'm gonna to attempt to peel a copy of the red out of that image and just drag it over here to the side. Then I'm gonna peel a copy 
of the green out as well. And then I'm going to peel a copy of the blue. Behind the scenes, your image is made out of these three colors. And that's because your eyes, to simplify things, can only see red, green, and blue. And everything else you see is really your eyes giving you an interpretation of the combination of the red, the green, and the blue that it's seen. So I should be able to take this and reconstruct it. Let's just put this up here and see if we can get that to line back up. And then I'm going to try to grab this one up here and pull it back down. And if I get it lined up, it should be full color again. And there we go. You can see it's really behind the scenes made out of red, green, and blue. And you, also, and you also see this with printing. Why can you print an image using only three colors of ink? Cyan, magenta, and yellow. Because your eyes are only sensitive to three colors of light. And three colors of ink can reproduce what your eyes could see. The only thing is we're using ink, which absorbs stuff instead of light. So we need to use the opposite colors. So we'll figure out what the opposite colors are here in a second, and we're gonna see them in the histogram. So now take a look over here on the left side and imagine these are spotlights. This is like a green flashlight. If I go over here, well, it's not above that, but if I go over here, it's shining green light on things. And this is a blue and a red one. And you've probably seen, if you ever went onto a stage show, maybe a rock concert or something, oftentimes they happen to choose red, green, and blue light. And that's because if you take green light and you overlay it onto blue, and then you take red light and you overlay that onto it, you get white. And therefore, you could take three spotlights, one that's red, one that's green, one that's blue, overlay them and put the performer right there in the middle. It would look like you're lighting them with white light, but right around the edge, if it's not aligned precisely, you'd see those colors and it can look pretty cool. And then when you don't want to illuminate that um, person anymore, you could move the red over here, green over there, and you can have them go across the stage and look all colorful and then come right back up to where the performer is and give them some white light. Well, the same kind of thing is true when we're in Lightroom and Photoshop. If we ever use red, green, and blue together, we don't see any color. And we can get shades of gray out of that too. Just don't use 100% red. Use 40% red, 40% green and 40% blue, and this would be a different shade of gray. As long as red, green, and blue are balanced, you get a shade of gray. Then let's figure out what colors we would need to get the opposite of red, green, and blue, because that's very important when you're looking at a histogram. So let's figure out what is the opposite of red. What I mean by opposite is what does it look like when you have a lack of red, but you do have the other colors? Well, let's just take the other colors here and overlap them right there. That's a lack of red. And that's why you have cyan ink loaded in your printer. If you have an inkjet printer or you use a printing press, what cyan ink does is it absorbs red light. That's its sole purpose in life. Use 100% cyan ink, you've absorbed all the red light. So the opposite of red is cyan. And you're going to see cyan in the histogram. Whenever you do, it's going to mean there's a lack of red light. Then let's figure out the opposite of um, green. So let's see what it looks like when you have no green, but you have the others. So all I'm gonna do is grab this and move it over there. Now we see what it looks like to have a lack of green. It's magenta, that's why you have magenta ink loaded into your inkjet printer, because all magenta ink does is absorb green light. And so if you use 100% magenta ink, you get no green light bouncing off. And so we're going to end up seeing magenta in that histogram whenever there is a total lack of green. And if we see green being lessened, it means this is being increased. It's like a seesaw or teeter-totter. You can't have this and this simultaneously because they're opposites of each other. So then the only other thing we need to know is what is the opposite of blue? Uh, the lack of blue, I should say. So let's take these two and overlap them. Ah, it's yellow. So anytime you see yellow in a histogram, it means there's absolutely no blue. It means the these two colors are being combined. Green and red put together make yellow, and it's lacking blue. If you put the blue in there, 
and you may use them all equally, you would get a shade of gray, depending on how bright or dark that is. All right, you don't need to remember all that, but what you would be most useful to remember would be the opposites of red, green, and blue. And eventually, you just memorize it. So then, let's take a look at what those histograms are. Well, you remember when I showed this image on the right as if it was made out of red, green, and blue, where we separated it like this? Well, your computer's doing that behind the scenes. And if you happen to be in Photoshop, let's see, you could take this and you would view these in the channels panel. And they'd be called red, green, and blue. The only difference is they'd show them as black and white. And any black and white photograph you have can be shown as a histogram. A histogram is simply describing the brightness range found in that picture. So let's go open that image. And if you want to see that, just in case you're not familiar with it, here I'll open the channels panel. There's red, green, and blue channels. And they are identical to what I was showing you a few minutes ago when I was pulling them around on my screen. In fact, you can go over here to your preferences in Photoshop if you choose interface. And there's even a checkbox in your preferences that is called show channels in color. When you turn it on, watch my channels panel. You see, they just changed to their real colors. It's just harder to compare these when they're in color. And so you turn that off and they're in black and white and it's easier to compare them. So then if we wanna get a histogram, I go to the image menu. One place I can do it is go to adjustments in levels. Here's our histogram. This describes the brightness range in our picture. Right down here is all the brightness ranges we could possibly have from white to black. And if you pick any one of these shades and go straight up from it, if there's a bar on the bar chart, that shade is found somewhere within your picture. So this image does contain white because there's a line above white. It does contain black because there's a line above black and it contains all the other shades as well. Well, this is describing the image as if it was black and white. That's what you get when this says RGB. That's not always the most useful information. Sometimes it's more useful to see the brightness of these individual channels. You can do that here in levels by changing this menu to red. And now this is giving you a histogram of this particular channel. Just glance at the channel. Notice there's a huge area that's almost black, right? Well, look over here. There's a really tall area that's right above black. That's telling you it takes up a lot of space. If I go to the one below it, which is for green, black takes up less space. There might be a tiny spot over here. So if I switch this to green, notice the left side much lower. Uh, but the lowness is not actually that important. Uh, that's simply because they always stretched this uh, histogram so that one line always touches the top. So it's hard to really compare them when you look in between them like that. Anyway, then I can go to blue. Well, what if I wanna see all three of those at the same time? Well, that is what we're doing in Lightroom's histogram. So here is an example of what could be used as Lightroom's histogram. And if you look in here, your image is made out of always three colors. Those three colors do not change. They're always red, green, and blue. So look within this histogram and find red, green, and blue. You see red right there, you see green, and you see blue. Then they just had to figure out what do we do if we overlay three different histograms and we want to see them at the same time. Well, um, there's a bunch of stuff we can do. Let's see. First, here's just red. That's just looking at the red channel, telling us the brightness range that's within it. Here's just the green. And here's just the blue. All we're trying to do is show those three histograms at the same time. Well, if you happen to remember the flashlights we had over here, well, if we were to think about what does it look like when you have blue and red overlapped? Well, there's magenta, right? Well, why don't we just show that in the histogram if the blue histogram overlaps the red one? We'll just make it look like this. And what if the green histogram overlaps the red one? Well, let's make it look like that. And what if the green overlaps the blue? That. But you don't have to remember all this so much. Let's go back because when I turn these on first, let's turn on two at a time. So here's blue. I'm going to turn on green. Do you see where they overlap is where you get that other color. And that other color is cyan. Cyan happens to be the opposite of red. Uh, if you use cyan ink, you absorb all red. And that means there's none in there. All right. So then let's see what happens if instead we have that blue and we overlap red. 
There we go, we get magenta in there. And magenta is the uh, opposite of green. Magenta, if you use it on a printing press, let's say, it absorbs all the green light. So that's what it looks like when there is no green. Uh, and then we can turn them all on. And wherever all three of them overlap, do you remember when I used them as kind of spotlights? When they all three overlapped, we saw white. Uh, in here, it just shows it as a shade of gray. So the gray means all three of these histograms are overlapping each other. So that doesn't yet tell you how to think about it. It seems like you've just been going through a bunch of weird stuff about color. Well, let's see. What we're gonna be doing when we're adjusting an image in Lightroom is we're gonna be doing the equivalent to coming in here and moving the histogram. Here I'm moving the red histogram. And you can see that it changes as it overlaps the others. Or I could come in here and grab the blue one and move it instead. And, or I might be stretching it. So for instance, I could do this. I can go stretch that guy. But whatever it is that I end up doing with the adjustment sliders is gonna call, cause the histogram to change. And so let's see if we can figure out how to think about it. I'm actually gonna switch back over to Lightroom and let's grab that first image. I'll make it uh, nice and big by hitting spacebar and I'll go to the develop module. The histogram of the develop module is the most accurate one. If you're in the library module, you'll get a histogram that looks very similar, but they're not identical. It has to do with a technical reason. In the develop module, you're in what's called Profoto RGB. And when you're in the library module, you're in Adobe RGB. And so they're not exactly the same, but it doesn't matter as far as how you interpret this. All right, so let's take a look at this. I said on this image, if I remember correctly, that in the bright area of the picture, it's not very colorful. And if there's any color at all, it's the slightest bit of blue. Now we can find out if that's true in a couple ways. The histogram told me it, but another way is I can move my mouse on top of the image. And if I do, there are some numbers that appear underneath the histogram. And I had a whole separate video on that topic, which I'll try to put on the screen. Uh, and if not, I'll put it at the end of the video. And if I were to hover over an area in the bright area of the picture, like where there's snow, and I were to look at those numbers, look at which one of those numbers is highest. Do you notice blue is highest? That means that if this was balanced, if the red, the green, and the blue numbers were identical, it'd be just like when we had those three spotlights overlapping each other, we would have a shade of gray. Here we have something really close to gray, but there's just the lightest, tiniest bit of blue in it. Well, I knew that from the histogram. How the heck did I know that? Well, let's look at this histogram. Notice, here's the histogram. There are three shapes overlapping each other. It's a little hard to tell if there's three there because of all the colors, but I know that there's red, green, and blue, and the shapes should be very similar. Just like if you look at these over here, there are three shapes. If you look at red, green, and blue, and you ignore where they overlap, you just try to follow the shape that you would have for red, green, and blue. Well, there are three shapes there. And I'm looking at, are they lined up? Do they perfectly cover each other? Here, we're really close to perfectly lining up where they would perfectly cover each other. If they perfectly covered each other, then the brightest portion of this image would be a neutral tone. It would have no hint of blue in it. And I could do that right now. If I just come in here and go to my basic sliders, we have white balance and right here's blue versus yellow. All I need to do is take this slider and push it a little bit towards yellow. Yellow is the opposite of blue. So we'll absorb some of that blue and this little hint of blue right there should get snugged under the rest of the histogram. I hope, I don't know, I haven't tried it. Uh, there, it got snugged under. And do you see how now they're so close to lining up that it's almost hard to see any color? Well, now if I were to go up here, this is actually uh, truly neutral or extremely close to it. Uh, so anyway, that's what that told me. I'll choose undo is remember dark stuff's on the left, bright stuff's on the right. So in the bright portion of the image, we were close to neutral, meaning the shapes of the three histograms that are overlapping were almost perfectly aligned. Then whichever one is towards the right, towards the right means brighter. And if something's brighter, you're gonna see it more. I saw a hint of blue. And so that told me that near the bright part of the picture, it was close to neutral because these were close to overlapping. And if anything, we had a hint of blue. But you might be thinking, what about the yellow that's over here? 
Well, if anything is to the left of the primary shape that is there, you're saying you have less of that because the left part is darker. That means less light. And so if I see anything there, do you see that yellow? And we're using less of it, then it's as if we're getting more of its opposite, more of whatever the opposite of that is. And the opposite of yellow is blue. So uh, both of those clues told me about it. Now you might be wondering, how the heck do I know what the opposite colors are? Well, I can show you in Photoshop is one good place to see it. Uh, if I come over here to Photoshop and just open up the info panel. If you go to the window menu, you'll find info and you're gonna find there RGB, that's red, green, blue, and CMY, that's cyan, magenta, yellow. And the opposites are directly across from each other. I often have this open when I'm working in Photoshop and I can just glance up there if I don't remember. So if I see less yellow in an image, it means we have more of whatever's over there. Uh, if you don't like this, then you could attempt to apply an adjustment. Um, I gotta get onto a layer I could adjust though and then choose image adjustments and go to color balance because you'll see them more blatantly there. Red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, they're opposites of each other. So if you have less yellow, uh, it's like moving this slider away from yellow. It's meaning you have more blue. Uh, less yellow is the same as more blue. Um, so anyway, it takes a little while to get used to the opposites, but let's head back over to Lightroom and let's spend more time with our uh, histogram. How did I know the darkest portion of this picture was green? Well, in the darkest area, which means the left portion of the histogram, that's the dark stuff, I see three shapes, red, green, and blue. And I can see where they overlap because they change to different colors. But if I look at those three shapes, I'm looking for how are they displaced from each other? If they were perfectly on top of each other, it would be gray. This is not. Instead, do you notice that green is pushed the furthest to the right? That means green is brightest out of all those colors. That means it's like having a spotlight that has green light in it and you turned up the knob on it to say, give me more. And therefore it's gonna make it look green. Then here you can see this yellow part. And yes, that does mean that since it's towards the right of these three groupings, it means that there are yellowish things in there as well. You can see the yellowish grass in here and the grass itself is not purely green. I could make this look more green. It's a yellow green. Uh, then I notice what's pushed to the left. Left means there's less of it. And so if I look right here, blue is what shows up. So if we have less blue, it's like we have more of its opposite. If you don't remember what that is, just go over here and look in the info panel, where's B for blue and what's directly across from it. It's yellow. So having blue low means yellow is high, but um, let's head back over. Let's go to the next image. All right, this one, I knew this was extremely colorful because do you notice that these histograms that are here, um, they're, only two colors that are here. Uh, this is just the overlap between the two. Remember, there's only three real colors in there because your image is made out of red, green, and blue. I see red there, I see green there, and blue is way the hell over here. When they're that separated, uh, then you have an extreme color. Uh, the more these get separated, the more color. If you wanna see it more, I can show you. I'm gonna take the saturation slider and I'm gonna bring it down. As I bring it down, watch the histogram. When I do, you're gonna find these shapes getting closer and closer to lining up. Do you see this pointy shape right here in that pointy shape right there and another pointy shape right there? Those three will likely move closer together. Then over in here, I'm assuming these are related shapes, the red, the green, and the blue, they'll likely start moving closer together. So as I do this, you see them all getting closer and closer together. And once they get completely lined up, you have no color. And if they're off just a little bit, you see how they're off just a tiny bit? You have the tiniest, almost imperceivable amount of color in the image. I can't see it, but there is a hint of color in there. And I can tell you in the bright portion of the image, that hint of color is yellowish red. So it's an orangish tone because look at the right side of the histogram. What's sticking out towards the right? That's what's brighter. And I see yellow and red. That's yellow and red put together would be orange. 
And so then I could bring this back up. And if I crank the saturation, watch, those things get even more separated. So the more separated the three humps are of red, green, and blue, the more colorful something is. The closer the three humps of red, green, and blue are, the less colorful something is. So I'll choose undo because I don't want to mess up this picture. And just looking at how separated everything is, this image is pretty darn colorful. And I can tell you though in the dark portion, it's less colorful because these two are getting close together. And so this one is the main thing that's making it uh, different in color. Notice it's to the left. To the left means less of something and it's blue. So anytime it's to the left, it means you're really getting more of its opposite. So if I think about blue, and if you don't know the opposite of blue, let's head back over to Photoshop where we have the letter B directly across from it. That means it's becoming more yellow. It's once you get used to this, you can put it on a post-it note, put it on the side of your screen, that um, this is much easier to interpret. Let's go to another image. Uh, this image, I knew that the highlights were blown out to white. I did not have to look to see that. How did I know it? I looked at the histogram. And on the histogram, white is represented on the far right, right here on the absolute end. And do you see that there's a little bitty part there where it's not just one pixel tall, it's maybe three. And that means that uh, white is taking up a little bit of space. But do you see on top of that is a taller spike that's yellow. And that tells me that we're losing detail in an area, but it's yellow. You see the yellow in the histogram. That's what told me that the area, the littlest bit darker than white would be yellow and it would have no detail. Now that's because it's pushed all the way to the end. That's uh, like what you call uh, clipping. Uh, then if you look in the bright portion of the image up in here, I can see the, the red and it looks like there's green in there. It's the yellow part here is where the two overlap, um, but I'm not seeing the blue in there. And so if I want to see where the blue is, I could take saturation and bring it all the way down and just watch this animate as I do and see where does blue come from? Because I know all these colors are going to overlap if I bring saturation down. So I bring saturation down and look at how far away blue is. And in fact, I couldn't even bring it all the way down because vibrance is turned up. But if I bring that down to, to the middle, it should do it. Come on. Oh, I'm surprised. It, oh, this image, I bet, has more than just basic adjustment sliders applied. This probably has uh, what is called uh, color grading applied. So let's go down here and see if that's the, yeah, this has got, uh, this is forcing it towards that color. If I turn that off, you'll see that they overlap. Uh, if I leave that off and just come back up here and go back to where it was, I think vibrance was up and, and saturation was up, uh, you'd be able to see it then. Let me see. When I bring this down, watch where blue came from. All I'm doing is looking at this red shape, that green shape, and saying, I don't see blue. Where are you? And as you bring saturation down, it's going to come from somewhere. And you can see it came all the way from way over there. And so when I saw this image, let me back up so I don't mess this up there, back to where I was when I started. Uh, so when I looked at this, I said, hey, I see my red and my green. The green just about overlaps the red here when it gets uh, low, but I don't see blue anywhere near here. And the further away these are from each other, the more colorful. So I thought this image was extremely colorful. Uh, at least that's what I'm thinking right now. I don't remember what I described earlier. Uh, and I see that red over here is pushed way to the right. So I said, this is red. Then I saw where the green and red overlap, which makes uh, yellow. And so I thought it was reddish yellow, which also is another way of saying orange. Uh, then in the dark portion of the image uh, here, we have colors that are close to lining up. Do you see this kind of gray area coming up? You could call that the gray component. Uh, if that takes up the majority of the shape that's here and there's not much color coming out, it would have been neutral. And so I would have guessed that this would be a little bit uh, less colorful, but you notice that these things are pushed to the left of what else is here. So that means we're getting the opposite of this. So what's the opposite of cyan? Well, over here, the opposite of cyan would be reddish because red is crossed from cyan. Just put that on a post-it note so you don't have to look like I do at the uh, info panel. Anyway, that's that one. Let's go to another one. Uh, this guy, uh, the bright portion of this is very close to neutral. 
The way I know that is look for red, green, and blue shapes and see if they're overlapping. Here they're almost perfectly overlapping other than the, the heights a teeny bit off. On the right side, I see the littlest bit of blue and cyan sticking out. Anything to the right means that it's dominating a little bit. So in the bright area, if anything, there's a tiniest hint of bluishness. We have no white in the image. And how did I know there was a red object in this thing? Do you see a lone red dot? that is separate from everything else. And so I guessed there was a little speck of red somewhere in that image, because that speck of red would usually be connected to the rest of this thing, uh, but that's my guess there. I don't know for sure that that's him, but that's what I saw. Uh, then I look over here and look at how separated these three shapes are. There's always three shapes, red, green, and blue. The other colors are simply where they overlap. So I can see red, I can see green, the yellow's where the two overlap, and then blue is over here. Well, if blue is towards the right, whatever's towards the right is what's dominant, so it's blue in the medium darkness areas of this picture. Uh, and anything is pushed to the left, uh, is what you're getting less of, it really means you get the opposite of that. So in here I see yellow, and let's go back to Photoshop. What's opposite of yellow? Yellow over here is blue. So if you remembered that, that right there tells me we have blue in there. Now by actual shadows, we don't have much here. These are not very tall, and they're relatively close to lining up, so that means it's close to gray. That's how, what I got out of that particular histogram. Now these are old images, I can tell because the lightning bolt is here. That means it's not using, like it's using recovery and fill light. I just grabbed random set of images. Uh, this image, when I looked at it, I knew it had white highlights that were blown out because the right side of the histogram had a spike right where white would be. There's only a, just a dot of yellow on top. Uh, if that was tall, then I could tell you that there was some color in there like a yellow, but one dot's not enough. But there we have blown out highlights. Here I saw the three shapes, red, green, and blue. You notice they're shaped very similarly because they represent three black and white pictures that are very similar. Uh, like we saw in the channels panel, I see that they do not line up at all. And what's shifted to the right? That's what's dominant. What's dominant here is blue. And what's shifted to the left? That's what is lessened, and therefore we get the opposite of this. We're saying take less red. Well, let's go over to Photoshop, and less red means more of its opposite, cyan. So cyanish blue is what we had. That told me this is bluish cyan. In the middle one doesn't really matter because it's kind of equal between these two. If you made this so it wasn't overly bright and made this so it wasn't overly dark, they'd line up. In fact, we can do that. I mean, let's mess with our picture. Let me first update it so we use the, ooh, current process version changes this image a lot. Let's stay on the old one because it we're so um, similar shaped. I'm gonna go for temperature. That tells us between blue and yellow. If I move this towards blue, blue is gonna become more dominant by moving to the right. So if I do this, you'll see blue moves to the right. If I go the opposite way, blue will be lessened and I'm gonna get it until it gets close to lining up with the others. Then I see red over here. Well, this isn't quite red, it's magenta, and the opposite of that is green, but if I push this away from magenta like this, or push it towards like that. I'm gonna just try to get those to go more accurately line up. I might need to come in here. There, we're getting it a little bit closer. I'm not looking at the picture at all. I'm looking at just my histogram, trying to get it. Well, we're getting a little, see we're a, a little yellowish magenta uh, in here instead of being blue. So we might as well push that a little towards blue. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to precisely get it and I can see why. Vibrance is turned up. Vibrance messes with blues in its relationship to everything else. If I were to bring vibrance down, it'll be much easier to get those things to align. Now I should be able to be a little bit better. Uh, vibrance makes it so it's hard to color correct F uh, with vibrance jammed up there. But anyway, you see how these are almost perfectly lining up and here we have an almost black and white image because that's what, how a histogram works. Don't wanna mess my image up though, so let me go over here and just uh, get that back to what its original look. I'm gonna hit the right arrow key. This one, I knew that there was nothing black in the image because there's nothing in this part of the histogram at all. That's the dark part of the image. I knew there was nothing white in the image because there's a huge gap on the right side. Then I noticed the histogram, which usually has one or two dominant humps to it, had a bunch of dominant humps. 
Remember, all the humps are red, green, and blue. The other colors are simply where those uh, histograms overlap. So here I can see green. I can see just the edge of red. That means it's where the yellow is is where it's overlapping the green. So they're almost exactly aligned. In blue is a little bit to the right. That means in the darkest area, it is a hint of blue. Uh, if I look over here in the brightest area, I see the red and the green almost precisely overlapping because uh, I can see the little hint of green on one edge, hint of red on the other. Yellow is what you get when you overlap. And you see blue is pushed to the left. Well, um, the opposite of blue is yellow. I know that just in my head. So that tells me that the brightest area, if anything, is yellowish. And I do see kind of a yellowish in here. But then if you simply count the number of humps there are, but the humps might be separated, uh, you could tell how many tones there were here. The other thing I could have done is just turn down the saturation and then I can count one, two, three, four, five, six shades were in there. But when my saturation's turned up, those same humps are just separated. And so I just have to look for things that look similar. So these three things look similar. That was one brightness range. These three things, um, actually up to here, look similar. That was a second brightness range. These three look very similar in shape and height. That is the third. Here's the fourth. There's the fifth. And there might be a tiny sixth one. Do you see that one there? And that's how I knew that this was separated like that. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, this image, these three here, red, green, and blue, are almost overlapping. And that tells me it's almost gray. Uh, do you notice blue is a little bit to the left? The opposite of blue is yellow. That means there's a little bit of yellow. You also see on the right side, red is pushed out towards the right. Anything that's to the right is dominant. Anything that's to the left, you're getting more of its opposite. So that tells me that if the opposite of blue is yellow and this other side is red, where reddish yellow, that means orangish. And it, I said though that it wasn't very uh, prominent, at least I think that's what I said. And you can see that here, the sky barely has any uh, color to it. Uh, then I said in the other shades that it's probably yellowish. Do you see the yellow? It's whatever's pushed to the right uh, and maybe a little bit um, reddish, like a orangish red uh, in there. That's how I got that. The blue is pushed to the left, which would most likely be part of this. So if you're not sure, just bring saturation down. If the two start merging, you know it. That's where it came from. Um, and the opposite blue is yellow. So um, that's what I knew there. And if I wanted that sky to be neutral, I could right now come in here and adjust this and make it so that right side of the histogram get all of those shapes to overlap mm, as closely as you can and you would end up getting it to be as neutral as you can. Uh, I don't want to mess this image up though, because I just grabbed these images and I don't want to mess myself up. Uh, so I'm going to put it back. Uh, let's see here. I knew this was a black and white picture without even thinking about it. Why? Because there's no color in the histogram at all. In order to have color in a picture, you need to see it in the histogram. I can add color to this image. If I come down here to color grading, I can say I would like to take the highlights, meaning the bright portions of this picture, and maybe I would like to make them cool. As I do that, as I move this towards yellow, you're gonna see yellow either stick out over this side, meaning it's dominant, or you're gonna see blue stick out this side, which means it's becoming less blue. Let's see. Do you see the yellow sticking out? In any areas that are to the left, um, of the rest of the hump, you know, that it would match, like that hump matches this one, it's just been moved, uh, is blue. Anything that moved left is blue, anything that moved white is yellow. Uh, and so I can do that. Then let's say in the dark portion of the image, I'm gonna make it more cool. I'm going to make it more blue. So I'm gonna grab this and move it towards blue. And if you watch the histogram, you see what just happened, but look at what moved to the right, it's blue. And look at what moved to the left, it's yellow. Whatever moves to the left is what you're getting less of, and the opposite of yellow, if you're not used to it in Photoshop, where's yellow, is blue. So if you get used to those opposite colors, then you can interpret that, and that's why when we ran into another image, and I'd like to see what it looks like, let me first choose undo a few times here because I don't want to mess up this image, but uh, this image, uh, I thought it looked 
similar to, to black and white when I looked at this, and that's because the shape of the three histograms that are there, the red, green, and blue, even though I can't see a a red and a green, uh, where the two overlap is what I'm seeing. That's the yellow part. Uh, but anyway, they're so similar in shape and they're so close to lining up that that's why I thought this was um, something that would be close to black and white. Notice that blue is towards the right and that's on the right side of the histogram. That tells me from the mid-tones to the highlights, if anything, there's a hint of blue. Uh, you might not even be able to see it in here, but if you move your mouse in here uh, onto like one of these medium tones and you go up there and look at the numbers underneath the histogram, if those numbers were perfectly balanced, red, green, and blue, you would have a shade of gray. If they're out of balance, you do not have a shade of gray and whichever number is highest is probably dominant. Do you see the letter for B? It's bluish in that area. Uh, so anyway, I could tell that from looking at it. Uh, this image here, um, oh, this image, I think I thought was a JPEG. The reason I thought it was a JPEG, let's zoom up on the histogram here, is notice the histogram looks busy. It looks complex. It does not look like a smooth shape. There's all sorts of little spikes in it throughout. That usually indicates posterization. Do you remember the image that had just those uh, even um, areas? Remember this image? Do you see how much it's broken up into these individual zones? Uh, and if I go back, what image was I on? This image, no, this image. Uh, now you see that kind of broken up. It's just not as broken up. There's not as big a gaps in between them. If I see that, it usually means somebody's either working with a JPEG file, JPEG files, JPEG files contain only 256 shades of red, 256 shades of blue, and 256 shades of, what's the one I missed? Red, red green, blue. <laughs> anyway, if you have a raw file though, you have thousands of shades. And that means that the histogram has, is actually not even showing you all the information that's there. And uh, it's only if you have a JPEG that when you start adjusting the image, it starts breaking apart and looking like a comb. Um, so in this particular case though, I don't think that's the, the case. What this is, because I see it's a Photoshop file format image, is this is a panorama. And right now I don't have my hard drive with the original images connected. And if I did, it could load the original picture. But right now if I click to zoom up, you see that it's gonna sit here and I don't think it's ever gonna load. It's just gonna look really pixelated like this. If anything, it'll figure out that the original isn't there and it might not let me zoom in this far. But um, that means that this is using a smart preview. And in Lightroom, a smart preview does not contain as much data as the original picture does. If I actually connected my hard drive and then I zoomed up on this thing, it would load and you'd see the detail in here and this histogram would smooth out it would still have the same general shape. It would be just as if all these spikes were removed and the general shape would be drawn out. So spikes either mean that you have an image that has these foggy distinct tones like this, or it means you have a JPEG file or something else that doesn't really have enough data to deliver a overly useful end result. But this image would be fine as long as I had the original, original uh, because it would smooth out. Okay, I think I looked at this image because the histogram looks familiar. I thought it might have been a black and white when I glanced at it, and that's because the three histograms are so close to lining up that it's almost hard to tell what's there. I said, if anything, there's a hint of yellowish, uh, red or orange uh, in the image, more so in the, the highlights. I don't know if I said that or not, but that's what I'm looking at here. Um, and uh, if you look at the image, I see kind of yellowish orange in here. But in general, it's close to a black and white image because those three histograms are really close to lining up. Um, I don't think we looked at that histogram. I don't know. But I just oh, if you don't see a histogram, it means the photo is missing in Lightroom. Uh, all right. So anyway, here I see this shape. Do you see a U shape? I see two other U shapes right there. So that's red, green, and blue. That's indicating an area that takes up a lot of space. And I would like to get it so whatever that is, is a shade of gray. So let's line them up. There we go. I just got them to line up and now you see all the color got out of there. Um, 
So anyway, there's all sorts of things you can do. It, it's just a nice indicator of what's going on with the color within your image. Sometimes I look at it and I just go, huh, all right, this is blue. Uh, the opposite of yellow is blue. So yeah, that's blue. And I just might say, what happens if I push that away from blue? And I'm not even gonna look at the image yet. I'm just gonna do this and see what happens to the histogram, see if they merge. I mean, if they start separating again, I'll stop. But no, how far can I go until they merge? Stop right there. That's when I get them the most close to lining up. And then look at the image and say, did that help uh, or not? You can always go on the left side if you're in Lightroom and go here and just uh, click on the step before it. There's before, there's after. Uh, I don't know if I like it better or not. It's just different. It's a personal choice. But the histogram gave me a hint that sometimes your eyes get used to what you're seeing and you might not have noticed uh, that there was a good amount of blue in there. Um, see, this is just, I messed with the color. Uh, I, this might've been the example I used for the thumbnail and how did I make it? Uh, what I did is I took vibrance and saturation and I cranked them up. Uh, let's get this image to be as neutral as we can, which means I'm getting the histograms to line up as much as I can. Uh, maybe there. And then let's uh, crank this. If I do saturation, just watch these. Remember, there's three histograms there, red, green, and blue. You're going to start to see them separate both there and there. Here it goes. And the more they separate, the more colorful things are. I can bring vibrance up. That also makes things more colorful. You see it's yanking that red towards the left. Um, the opposite of red, by the way, is cyan. So that's making something in the image. It's this background area. Uh, more cyan uh, in there. And you can see that I can get a crazy looking uh, histogram. And that's just by making the image overly colorful. And uh, that's what I did to make the thumbnail for this uh, YouTube. I think I might have used this image because that's why it looks so ridiculous. But you might not recognize the humps and, and that's the case when things become overly saturated. For this particular image, what I did is I moved temperature and tint to their extremes. If I bring them back by double clicking on the sliders, uh, this is more normal. Uh, and just by, I, I don't need to look at the picture. I can tell you this image is blue, has a blue color cast, because do you see this blue shape? And do you see this yellow shape? Uh, yellow is the opposite of blue. So because yellow is the two colors that are not blue overlapping each other. Uh, and so I'm just going to move this until this and this, these all uh, kind of merge together right about there. Then I'll look at my image and then I'll decide, do I want a little warmer or cooler? Maybe a little warmer on purpose. You don't need things to line up, but before we go, let me show you how to get the similar histogram over in Photoshop. Because in Photoshop so far, all we've seen is what's in levels and you can get a histogram here. If you go to the window menu, there is a choice called histogram and there we go. Um, this histogram will not default to looking like it is right now though. If you go to the upper right to what's known as the hamburger menu, um, it will default to compact view. And if you click on that little side menu, you can choose expanded view. Then if you click up here, you're gonna find uh, the choice of RGB. Uh, you might think that's what you want. You see the colors don't show up. That's just combining red, green, blue without showing you the colors. You can see them individually as red, green, blue, but what you want is colors. Uh, this image is not a photograph, so of course this looks weird, but if I switch to a normal photograph, you're gonna see a more normal histogram that's there. And if you ever see this little symbol up here, it means it's using a lower resolution proxy image to make it so this updates quickly so that this might look like it turns into a comb or a spiky, similar to when we had a panorama that I thought was a JPEG. And when you click on this, it will likely smooth out and that is when it truly looked at the picture itself. If you've made it this far, then it tells me that you really are into Photoshop and Lightroom in really knowing how things work. If that's the case, go and check out mastersacademy.com. That's where you will find 250 hours of me teaching Photoshop, teaching Lightroom, and teaching photography. If you truly want to master what you're doing, understand it and take control of it, then that's where you want to be learning Photoshop.